So uh, again, welcome everyone for uh, joining us tonight. I can tell you, you are in for a treat. Uh, buckle up, as they say, is uh, is uh, the right words for tonight. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping uh, as people are joining us. Uh, tonight, you will, uh, if you have questions along the way, please uh, drop them in the chat and we will try to get to them at the end of the uh, presentation that Michael has put together. And I can assure you, he is prayed up, he is pumped up, and he is raring to go. Now, <clears throat> first of all, uh, you may not know me. My name is Wally Casabo. I'm the tech guy behind the scenes uh, for Michael and uh, keep his website going and a few other technical things like running this webinar and such. Uh, but enough about me. I'd rather tell you more about uh, Michael. So let me give you a little bit of introduction about Michael. Since uh, 1988, Michael has pioneered the uh, application of biblical strategy and natural law to sales and business. He had his own daily radio uh, sponsor seven, for seven years, growing to nearly 200 stations nationwide. He recently led a fledgling sales organization from the three struggling agents to the fastest growing real estate brokerage in America and the 16th fastest growing company on the Inc. 500 list. Michael is a prolific author, having published over 20 books and sold hundreds of thousands of them. Some of his best books include The Bible Incorporated, Seven Secrets of the Sale, and The Rainforest Strategy. A couple of months ago, Michael finished his masterpiece, a four-book set called God's Best Kept Secrets. Just the titles alone are compelling to any business owner, taking back the gates of commerce, the divine blueprint, the race is not to the swift, and the perfect business model. Michael is a friend's friend. He loves anyone he speaks with or coaches in his weekly live call. I'm fortunate to call Michael a personal friend. To his credit, he pulled me by my bootstraps up when I was at my low points in my life. And I now have the privilege of working with Michael on a daily basis. But one more thing I should add and mention before I bring on Michael is that he was recently given a very prestigious award by none other than Peter J. Daniels, given to only a few people who have been credited with very high achievement. Michael received the Peter J. Daniels Caleb Encouragement Award. So I'm proud to know Michael, his wife, Judy, and even his dog, Judah. And I'm pleased to be able to, to uh, introduce to you my friend, Michael Pink. And here he is. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are we doing? You got your volume up there and everything. We good? I can hear. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. We should be good to go. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to see some folks in here. I don't know who's on the call here. But before we get started, can anybody just let me know uh, <clears throat> where are you from? Just give me some ideas I want to know because we're doing this all over the world. And we know that from Madagascar to Madison Avenue to you know, Malaysia to Morocco to wherever it is. So if you could put a thing in the chat and say, where are you from? And let us see and say hello. And then I've got a couple of questions I want to ask everybody. So let me see. Well, I found out the chat is disabled for some reason. So let me see if I can fix ah, that. There we go. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you can un undisable it or just whatever it is. But yeah. <clears throat> listen, while you're working on that, Wally, uh, let me know when you've got that uh, working. Um, I want to say something to the folks here. I prayed this morning for this meeting, of course, and throughout the day, but this morning particularly, you know, I sent the, the invitations out to my list and um, we were getting lots and lots of responses. And I said, Lord, thank you. The, the chat seems to be working now. So go ahead and put your answers in there. I said, Lord, who do you want to be here tonight? Who do you want to be here tonight? Would you invite those people? That was my request. Now, I'm seeing so many things pass by here. I'm just seeing it all over the states. I see too many to call out Barbados. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Accra, British Columbia, Canada, Tampa, Kansas, Alberta, 
Priyana from London. Hi there, Priyana. The, um, it's a lot. Hey, Jordan Grimes from Tampa, Florida. Good to see you. Some names I know. Um, the names are going kind of fast, so fast. It's a little hard for me to read. Andres Suarez, Mississauga. You and I have talked. Kevin Fullerton. Good to see you from out there, out west. Um, Norm from Calgary. Hello from Trinidad. Teresa Scotland. Hello there, Teresa. Anyways, I am glad to see everybody. Uh, Michael Spells from Minnesota. Come on. <laughs> All right. We got some people coming. Joseph Mannion, Clearwater, Florida, Saskatoon. I, hey, Saskatoon, the river goes. I forget what's the name of that river, but you can probably tell me. I've been to Saskatoon. I drove to Saskatoon from Vancouver, and I loved it. It's a, To my mind, it's a beautiful city. Flat, flat as a pancake, but very nice, the way I remember it. Uh, so welcome here. And that's also where, um, let me see. Uh, what was the fellow's name? Blackaby. Henry Blackaby was from Saskatoon, if I remember right. He pastured there. So anyways, and Larry, good to have you uh, read from Toronto. Hey, Robert, Bob, Robert McFarland from Ottawa. Hey, man, good to have you on the call. So I'm so happy to see so many of you jumping on and joining us. And listen to what you know, because I realize a lot of people are going to be catching this after the fact. We had, we had a capacity set uh, for the limitation. We went well over it. Uh, the last I checked, we're over 600 registrants, but the a significant number of people say, hey, you know, look, at, I'm registering, but I can't be there. I'm either the wrong time zone or I got other plans, but I want the replay, which we'll make available for a few days after the fact. So if you're catching this, my, my presumption is that God has invited you. I asked him to speak to whoever needed to be here tonight. So I want to ask you guys a question. If you could do this in the chat, just before I get started, because I don't want to assume too many things here. But I'm so glad to see all these names in there. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hey, yes. Come on. There's just so many folks in here that I recognize. Carol Linden from California. Hello. Um, here's my question. And, and let me say this. Let me, let me back up. I want to speak candidly to you tonight. I want to go off the script, unscripted. Normally, I have a PowerPoint prepared. I had one. I worked it out and I threw it out. I want to share what is raw from my own heart. But before I do, what God has really put in me, before I do that, I just want to ask you guys, I, I, we have the, the great benefit of being able to do this call, which I'm thrilled to be able to do. But there's a bit of a disadvantage because if we were together in a coffee shop, I could look you in the eye and you could, you know, we could have a dialogue. So it's a little different, but I'm going to ask you this. Would you please put in the chat, in as, however many words it takes you, why you're here tonight, what you're hoping to learn tonight. Because tonight I'm going to unload some things and hopefully open up some horizons for you. But I'd like to know what you're hoping to learn, why you came tonight, what what sparked the interest in you. Uh, I'd like to see what <clears throat> some of you have to say about that. Um, um, hey, Melanie, good to see you. Joanna said something about earning. Somebody says, uh, I want to build a business God's yeah. way. Uh, another one says, I expect the Lord to show up with major revelations. Come on, William. That's right. Uh, sorry, somebody said to learn. Thank you, Joanna, for clearing that, Joe. Uh, let me see. Uh, understand manifold wisdom. Wisdom to serve God in the market, in the uh, business realm. To see what else God has for me. To learn what I need to be con uh, consistent in my results. I think it said I, it's going a little bit faster. I like it that it's going, but I can't get it all. I just want to learn more. Learn some secrets. You're going to you're going to learn some secrets. I'm here to receive each and every revelation you share and wisdom. Would like to learn more about the revelations God has given you. I'm looking for divine guidance in my current business. All right, James. I'm desperate for the Lord's leading. Desperate. I need Him and His ability to create wealth. Carrie Lemon, you will not leave empty-handed. I'm looking at all these reasons. Learning the kingdom way. I'm here to find out what the kingdom is doing. Ideas to build to business so I can earn enough to build a ministry, house, wisdom, and revelation. I love it. Transformation. Come on, Melanie. You know that. Ryan Skarka. Hey, Ryan. I want to hear what God has put on your heart for today. All right. Discovering God's secret is a blessing beyond compare. You you guys are on. B. Kun says, just soak up more of your godly wisdom. Love you, B. So glad that you're here. B. Kun is my wife's sister, and what a treasure she is to me. Love you, B. Um, revelations to multiply. I want you to mentor me, Abraham. Hey, Abraham, Bob Lindsay, to build a business that honors him. Ah, uh, my goodness. Okay, with inventions, inventions and the courage to start. Yeah, you guys, 
Okay. This is important. I needed to get a sense of that. You can keep adding if you like, but I want to tell you that there's a reason why we're doing this. When you learn God's best kept secrets, it's going to turn your life upside down. It's going to make, it's going to give you the most exciting life you've ever imagined. My life has been like better than Knott's Berry Farm, better than Six Flags, better than Disney. You know, the roller coasters doing all this kind of stuff, the curves and upside down. I tell you what, I've been through so many things. And I remember when the Lord showed me back decades ago that that's the path I'm taking you on. And it is going to be one exciting ride. And it's a little scary sometimes, especially when I was younger. Like, oh, no, are we going down that hill but or up this mountain, whatever it is? But that seems to be the way it is. And it's a life of adventure. Being a Christian and living for God and living with him is not by any stretch uh, a dull thing. But here's why we're here in my mind. They often say, as America goes, so goes the world. And perhaps that's true. But America, and in my opinion, the world, is really in a, in a state of cultural decline. The things that are happening in my country, and I realize we got them from all over the world, so God bless you. But the things that are happening here, I mean, I just found out yesterday that I'm going to have to pay $2,000, and so is every other American living in this country, to pay off somebody else's uh, college debt. That's a surprise, $300 billion divided by 143 million taxpayers, a little over 2000 almost $2,100 a piece that we got to shell out because somebody said you should do that, which is not a good thing. It's not the way the Constitution works, and it's not a really good situation to be in. But we're in that. And I see the country and the culture taking a bit of a dive. And so what are we going to do about this? And, and oh, oh, my gosh. Jesus said, told us this parable about the 10 minus. And he says, I want you to occupy until I come. And that word occupy, some people like to say, well, that's like a military term. Well, it is like a military term, but it's not how it was, how it was written. In the original Greek, it means to trade and do business. He's saying, I want you to trade and do business until I come. Now you've heard the parable of the wheat and the tares, right? And, and, a lot of Christians are sort of in this mindset that, you know, Jesus is coming back tomorrow or certainly next month, September and Rosh Hashanah and all that. I don't know. Neither do you. But what I do know is that we're to we're to occupy until he comes. And what's happened when you look at the wheat and the tares, you see in the Bible, it says that a good man, he planted wheat. And it said, then while the men slept, while they slept. Hello, the enemy planted tares. As a result, we find things happening in the American school system that are absolutely shocking. Shocking. Because we went to sleep. However, we're waking up. We're waking up. And we need to take back the gates, is my expression. Taking back the gates. Now, if you got the scripture, let me see. Yeah, thank you for that. I want to talk about the gates. There was a promise made to Abraham. And, and, and what God said to Abraham as a promise, he said, you are going to possess the gates of your enemies. That's a promise. You possess the gates of your enemies. enemies. And so what we see is in Galatians 3.29, it says that <clears throat> we are, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And so, and heirs according to the promise. And so, what I see in the scripture is this mandate to take back the gates. And what are the gates? The, the gates are the portals of power. And what I see is Christians have shrunk back from the marketplace, afraid to be, uh, to make a profit because they say, you know, I should be in business, but not to make a profit. I, I, I just want to, I just want to, you know, Eke out a living. No, no, I'm in business to make a profit. You're in business to make a profit. That's the whole point of it. Read Matthew 25 verses, what is it, uh, 14 to 30, I believe it is, when it talks about the parable of the talents. Read that story. It's a, there's, a, there's an expectation of a profit, and there's a reason for the profit. And by the way, the way to make a profit in business, the way to make a profit is to provide value, great value to your market, which is a service. And we're rewarded for providing value. And the better you are at providing value and communicating that value, the better off 
you'll be. Now, moving forward, I get to the end of this year, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I went to the Lord, and I said, you know, Lord, I used to have, uh, when I would do my consulting, I'd have clients, I'd be on retainer five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month, and I said, I'm just going to go and get me a handful of clients, and that's it. I, I'll be fine. I'm just going to do that. And the Lord spoke to me because I actually went to him and said, I want an idea. We're like, what would be the right kind of relationship to have? Like I used to have when I would have corporate clients all over the country and outside of the country. And uh, he said, that's not why I called you. We are living, my friends, in a time that we have never lived in before. We, we, the challenges that are in front of us and are coming our way are unprecedented in our generation. Unprecedented in our generation. And I said, Lord, I, I have all this stuff. You've taught me so much stuff. When I first started learning biblical principles for business was when I was a young man in sales. And I, I was struggling to make a living. And he showed me, opened up the book of Proverbs and other places. And I went from, from below average to number one for the rest of the time. It, just, it was overnight. It was instantaneous. Once I saw, oh, that's how you do it. It's not the way man was teaching me. This is the way you do it. And I began to study. And I finished the year. I set a record for sales and all that. They made me the sales manager. Praise the Lord. At the end of 10 months, they evaluated where I was at. My team was up 430%. Friends, that's not normal. 10%, 20%, 30% is excellent. 430%, that's off the charts. What was that about? It was the idea was, was what I was learning transferable? And it was. So I went through that whole process. And then after that, learning, learning what I learned in that, I've, as Wally pointed out, sold hundreds of thousands of my own books. I kind of knew what I was doing. I started picking up clients. And I, I, one of the first ones I remember getting was a client that were doing $22 million a year, 22 million. But they've been stuck at that level for three years straight. And they called me near the halfway point and said, hey, Michael, can you help us? We haven't been able to get past 22 million. And this looks like we're going to do that again. I said, yeah, I can help you. Well, we went out. We did an analysis. I, we did a contract with them. And they finished the year at $30 million. I helped them up for the next year and added an extra couple million dollars profit to them. They gave me a lot of latitude to bring in the principles that I know. It was a Christian-owned company. Uh, I went to another company that was an education company. They were insolvent, insolvent couldn't pay their bills. A friend of mine bought that company and said, Michael, I don't know anything about sales. Will you help me? I said, sure. After three months, they had made over a million dollars profit. By the end of the year, they had done 30 million in revenue and 6 million in profit. They gave me latitude to, to, to do what I'm going to tell you tonight. Uh, you know, as Wally pointed out, the struggling team of three that, that they were about to close down and they became, you know, the 16th fastest growing privately held company in America. This, this has got absolutely nothing to do with your, the guy you're looking at right now. There's nothing to do with that. Nothing important. Let's put it that way. I learned some very, very valuable secrets. And I was saying, Lord, I'm going to get a few of those clients. And he said this to me. I'm paraphrasing. But I didn't call you now to do big ticket items. I want you to take everything I've shown you for the last 40 years, and I want you to disseminate it far and wide. Make it accessible to anybody. Make it accessible to the kind of people that were in David's cave, the cave of Adullam. You might remember that story. They were distressed. They were in debt. You remember those guys? They, they were in the best of uh, circumstances. And David, you know, he took these guys and they ended up becoming David's mighty man. He said, I want you to help those people. I want you to get this out far and wide. And I said, okay, well, that means writing a book. I guess that's how you get that out far and wide. I said, but God, you can't make money on a $15 book. I mean, I could charge a lot more, but as you know, if you've been to the website, I bundled them together and put them together for 15 bucks a piece. And I said, okay, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to disseminate it. Why? There was an urgency. I feel so, I, I, the minute he said that, I stopped everything, shut down almost everything I was doing and took the next four months. And from dawn till dusk, pretty much, I wrote. I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. I was writing a book, but it ended up being this big, this big, this big. It ended up being pretty big, 101 secrets that God had given to me over the 40 years distilled down. And now I'm here to help kind of spread it out a little bit. But uh, 
So I wanted you to understand that. And so what I did is I, after I wrote the book, it became, as you probably know by now, four books because it was too big to put in one book. I said, okay. And my wife, Judy, who's got a million great ideas, she suggested, why don't you take that a little bit further and put it in some kind of mastery program or a coaching thing or, a, or a, a course or something where you can take that and walk people through it. So I said, you know what? That's a good idea. And so we created uh, this whole thing called the Jesus School of Business. Probably all of you, because I think I linked everybody to this, saw the Jesus School of Business, which you can join for a dollar for your first month. And it's 59 bucks a month after that. And I put thousands of dollars of courses inside that program. But this, this one here, starting with God's Best Kept Secrets, Taking Back the Gates of Commerce, this book, the whole point of it was to actually raise some uh, awareness. This is about walking with God in the marketplace. How, how do you walk with God? I mean, it is a game changing strategy. Are you ready to walk with him? Can you imagine can you imagine the difference it makes on a call, in business, coming up with a strategy, in a meeting, any kind of situation, business or otherwise? Can you imagine a situation and now you're going along and you're walking with God and he speaks to you and he shows you things? For example, for example, this is not all about business. Let me tell you something. I was invited to a country. That, uh, to a company that was uh, an international company that had uh, uh, offices all over the world. They were a life insurance company. And they wanted me to do some training, January, February, whatever it was. And uh, so they were gathering your salespeople there in, in one city for uh, about 45 agents. And they were flying me down to do the training there. And then they were going to fly me to another country and do another 30 salespeople training there. And so I said, yeah, yeah we, we worked it out. I said, Lord, what's your, what's your agenda? Because I love to walk with him. And he talks to me. And he said, he said, I want to set this place on fire. I said, Lord, whatever do you mean? And I knew what he meant. It was just like, are you serious? So I, I called the person who was booking me. And I said, you know, I know you're a Christian. I know the president's a Christian. But am I allowed to share any Bible verses or any scripture? No, you're not. Mm, okay. I get down there, I have dinner with the president the night before the event, and uh, I asked him if there any of these people were Christians. He thought a few of them were. And I said, I've got something to tell you. God told me that he wants to light a fire here. And I think what he wants me to do is to invite your people at the end of the day of training and give an altar call in a business training at a hotel for a multinational life insurance company. How do you feel about that? And he said, well, we could, I guess. And I went through the day. I did my training with him. And at the end of the day, I told a story, a story about the glove. If you haven't read the story about the glove, go to my blog and, and Google or whatever the term is, search for the glove. I told the story about a glove being found on the side of the road. And if you found that glove on the side of the road, I said to these people, would you assume that it was a freak of nature? It's leather. It's nicely stitched. It's fur lined. It's got five fingers. It fits perfectly. Would you assume that that was somehow a freak of nature? Or would you assume that there must be a designer because it has a design? Well, of course. They said, well, of course, it's got to be designed by somebody. I said, great. And it's just a simple glove. And yet, if you saw it on the side of the road, you would realize that it's not fulfilling the purpose for which it was created. And it never will until somebody for whom it was created, puts their hand inside that glove and animates it, whether it's a golf glove or a garden glove or a baseball glove or whatever kind of glove it is, until somebody's hand goes inside it, it will never fulfill whatever it was created to do. They got that. I said, but the human eye is far more complex than a glove. And that's just one small part of the entire body. Do you think it's possible that maybe the design that we're all looking at here, there's a designer behind it? Well, yeah. I said, but you know what? We're like the glove laying on the side of the road because until and unless God puts his hand in us, his spirit inside us and animates us, we'll never know what our purpose and our call in life is. 
but he wants to. He wants to put his hand in our glove. He wants to put his spirit in us. And I want to know if there's anybody here that would like to know what that's like to have God come inside them, take up residence, and live with them and direct their life for the rest of their life. And if you would like to, to do that, I'd like to pray with you. At which point, the president comes up. The president comes up. And he says, okay, thank you. It's 5 o'clock, whatever time it was on Friday. The meeting's over. He says, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Michael. Hey, sales meeting Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Everybody come. Don't forget your expense reports. Don't forget this, that, and the other thing. And he gave a few other announcements. And then he said, and by the way, if anybody wants to pray with Michael, he'll be over here. Thank you. You all are dismissed. Now, I thought maybe one or two people would do that. But what happened instead was the entire room of 45 people stood up like one man. And every single person came forward. Everybody to receive individual prayer and to receive Christ to come inside them. The entire company, everybody in the room, which is all the salespeople. In fact, the vendor that, that was hired to film it, when it was all over, he said, can, can, I, can I have that too? I want him to put his spirit in me. And then we flew to the next country two days later, I guess it was. And the same thing happened with all 30 of those people. So when <clears throat> I want you to be aware that... Walking with God means listening to him and it will take you on an incredible adventure because you and I are his representatives in the marketplace. Now, I'm going to tell you all about business. We've got lots to do about that. But listen, there, he has an agenda and that agenda in my mind includes doing well in the marketplace, which by itself is a reward because we've done something good for somebody else. That's why we did well. And number two, that if we choose to, we can use our resources and our winnings, if you will, to advance the gospel, advance the kingdom of God on earth, and to take back the portals of power that have been captured by the enemies of the gospel and help save our country, save your country, shake up the world a little bit. We need to get out of retreat and into advancing. Is anybody with me on that? Let me see what we got going on. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you, Robin. Thank you. In book number one, you're going to learn all about hearing from God, walking with God in the marketplace. It's the supernatural. Look at this. I, I can't tell you all about it right now. If you want, you can You can certainly, uh, all the chapter titles are available on the website. But it's all about that. That's number one. Number two, here's the thing. You know, and I know, listen, we get all, we get all pumped up about, yeah, yeah, this is wrong. We got to do something about it and take back the gates of commerce or take back the country and, and, and all those good things, you know, push back evil. We're not going to, we're not going to be the wheat in the tares when they grow up, they grow up together. The wheat doesn't shrivel. It doesn't pull back. It grows up with it. Now, here's the problem that I've seen in the body of Christ. And it's one of the aches of my own heart that's just drove me nuts is a lot of people will tell you what, and they'll tell you why. But there's not many people telling you how. And I don't know anybody who's telling you how by the book, by the Bible. Now, you want to you wanna do well. Fair enough. The Bible says that he made known his, God made known his ways to Moses, but his acts to the children of Israel. There are biblical patterns in the Bible for just about anything you're going to want to do in business. But I bet you've never seen them unless you saw them from me. If you're in sales, the Moses questioning strategy in Numbers 13 has put millions and millions of dollars in my client's hands. It's a simple, simple thing with seven strategic questions that Moses had to have answered before invading Canaan. It's the perfect model for any sales and business situation. There's a template. Let's use that. Or let's suppose you, you want to negotiate. I've read great books on negotiating. I've read all kinds of them. I remember when I used to fly in planes, some of you have probably seen this. There used to be an ad that says, you don't get what you deserve in life. You get what you negotiate. And it was trying to get you to go to their seminars and all that. And that's true. But did you know the best book in the world ever written on negotiating? It's the book of Philemon. I think it's 28 verses or 25 verses. The book of Philemon is that little one-page letter before the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. I wrote 31 strategies for win-win negotiations out of that. So if, you, if you're in sales, it's Moses. If, if, if it's, did you know, oh goodness, did you know 
that the Ten Commandments guard and protect ten legitimate motivational needs that everyone has? Did you know that the seven tribes that were in the promised land, which is a type of the human soul, if you will, the heart, it's a type of that. Did you know the seven tribes, the meanings of their names represent seven areas of conflict that you must overcome or you're going to encounter them in the marketplace? Did you know that? Did you know that that um, there's Jesus modeled his life in such a way to create trust because trust is the highest form of human motivation when it comes to business? Well, how do you do that? Well, Paul tells us in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. When he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And he gives you seven points. There's so much stuff. So many biblical models. My favorite. I got to tell you this one, guys. In the Old Testament, remember Moses, right? You remember him? He, he's the guy that was charged with this thing called the Moses Tabernacle. And this Moses tabernacle is a, if you, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, it is a, it is a picture, catch this, it's a picture for how you have a successful life, whether it's in ministry or business or your marriage, it doesn't matter. And you say, well, I don't understand that. I, that's kind of boring when I look at that. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's one of the most exciting things in there once you realize what it is. Now, I'm going to give you a little clue because I talk about this in book number two. It's all in here. Um, this whole thing, and, and I call it, call it the divine blueprint. And it's basically, you have this, this tabernacle that Moses was building was a place where God was going to take up residence with them. And it had three distinct areas, an outer court, an inner court, and a holy of holies. Have you guys heard of that? Anybody heard of that? Let me see if you've heard of it. I, just put it in. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, or you don't. Let me see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, people know what I'm talking about. Okay. So you're going to catch this now. Yeah, good, 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 good. Listen, now listen, listen, listen. It's good. Listen, the outer court is illuminated by natural daylight. It speaks of naturally observable practices, best practices, we call them in business. Naturally observable. Oh, he does it this way. I'll do it that way. That's a naturally observable thing. We all learn by emulating and copying others. That's how we learn. That's how we started off learning. When we're little kids, we, you know, we learn from our parents and so forth, our teachers. And as we get older, we get a new job. We learn how Bob does it or how Sue does it or whatever. That's how we learn. That's outer court. And in the outer court, there were two things there. There was this, this uh, altar of sacrifice and something called a brass labor. One was where basically the sacrifice dealt with character issues and the labor dealt with preparation. It, it, it prepared them. It's basically, think of it this way, character and competence. And in this realm, you can do incredibly well if you learn the secrets that are in those two things. Now, Solomon, in, in the book of Proverbs, I think it's uh, 2220, I believe is the verse. He says, have not I written to you excellent things that you may know with certainty the words of truth and have an answer for them who ask you. And when he says excellent, that's why he, he didn't say that. He didn't speak English. It's Hebrew. And in Hebrew is the word shalish. And the Hebrew word means threefold. Have not I written to you threefold things? that you may know with certainty the words of truth and have an answer to them who ask you. Threefold things like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, body, soul, and spirit, prophet, priest, and king, the, the way, the truth, the life. Hundreds and hundreds in the Bible of threefold expressions, hundreds of them. And there's great truth. And one of them is the, 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 the Moses blueprint. And so you go from the outer court, which is like, you've heard of the 30, 60, 100 fold. The outer court is the 30 fold. The inner court, is the 60-fold return. This is metaphorically speaking, but it's not too far off. It may not even be off. But anyways, in the unicorn, there was this beautiful golden lampstand, solid gold with seven branches, burned olive oil, which is a type of the Holy Spirit. And it illuminated, catch this, it illuminated a table with bread on it. King James calls it table of showbread. It's also the table of his presence. And there was an altar of incense, which represents the prayers of the saints, according to Revelation. So you have this candle. The Holy Spirit is illuminating the bread. The bread is Jesus. He's the bread of life and the word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. As John said, we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the bread represents the word of God. Now, so what we see when we go inside this room, there was no daylight at all. It was completely dark except for the illumination from this candlestick, this beautiful thing that was burning. And what it's doing is it's illuminating the scripture, which is why I went and found the negotiating secrets of Paul. It's why I went and found all these different strategies that are in the Bible, because I look for it. Because when I'm trying to solve a problem, I say, I don't know what to do. Is there a biblical model? 
like if I have to stand up on a stage in front of a couple thousand people, what should I do? I one time asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is there an example anywhere in the Bible where somebody made a sales presentation, a presentation of some sort, and it was well received, and we have the transcript. You know, people talk about it online marketing, swipe files, keep your swipe files. I got a Bible. <laughs> I got it right here. I got everything I need, and he's given it to me. I don't have to swipe it from anybody. And I so, so I said, is there an example of that? And he said, well, right away, yeah, Acts chapter 2. And I studied Acts chapter 2 for years, by the way. It's, it's in here. It's in here. The presentation strategies of Peter. But anyway, he, he gets up. Now, get this. He's in front of a few thousand people, and they're hostile. They're mocking him, mocking him. And he gets up, and he speaks. At the end of his time, 3,000 people, 3,000 men made a decision not to get some free ice cream at the back of the room or get a free book. They made a decision that was going to cost some of them their lives, many of them their fortunes, and all of them their reputation. And they made it. Now, it was the Holy Spirit that brought conviction. We understand that. But how did Peter communicate? He was a vessel for that. What was in that speech? I mean, there's 12 major components, and there's actually 78 minor ones. I've studied that thing for, like I said, for years because it's a model. So if, you, if you're interested in learning the how, how God does things, and you want templates, whether it's for sales or for negotiating, for human resources, or, or, or conflict resolution, any of those kinds of things, that's what book number two is about. Book number three, the race is not to the swift. And <laughs> I didn't write these as individual books at first. It was just one big book, but you could never open it. This, as, as a, its main thing, is based on uh, Ecclesiastes, when he says, The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor riches to men of wisdom. He talks about the, the um, you can throw that up there if you see it, Wally. There's these five things. They're, they're called, I call them force multipliers. It's, it's speed, it's strength, it's wisdom, it's understanding, and it's skill. These five things Solomon brings out. And if you understand what does that mean in the Hebrew, what does it mean? How do I apply those five things? Because thank you, Wally, for putting it there. That is what the, these are very practical things for multiplying your business. However, it finishes the verse off and it says, but time and chance happen to them all. In other words, these five things are the top. You got to have these five things. But Time and chance happens to them all. And for years I read that and I thought, what do you mean? You mean just the roll of the dice and something could happen? I don't understand that. Until I looked in the Hebrew. And the word that they translate as time is not a word. It's, a, it's two letters. The first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That's what it is. The, and in the Hebrew alphabet, it's Aleph Tav. Aleph Tav. In the, in the Greek, it's the Alpha and Omega. In the English, it's the A and the Z. And what it is, is it, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He most likely said, because it was written in Aramaic originally, I am the Aleph Tav. And the Aleph Tav appears 10,000 times in the Old Testament, roughly. And it's translated about 200 times. It's mostly hidden. And what it is, it's a divine imprint of Jesus his presence being involved in something, his, him being actually involved in, in a situation. So let me see where I'm at here. I'll give you an example. When I'm in business, and I, I was doing a book uh, called The Bible Incorporated. Some of you might have seen this years ago. My first book I ever did, The Bible Incorporated. We printed this up with leather and brass corners and, and gold edges. That version is no longer. Anybody got that, by the way? Anybody got my original Bible incorporated? I have the paperback version now, but we did the leather version. And uh, when I did my second print run of this book, the only way I could pay for it, the only way I could pay for it was I had to pre-sell a bunch of books. So I had pre-sold 1,500 to one ministry and 5,000 to this other denomination. But I wouldn't print them until they paid me because once I put their name on, I can't sell it anywhere else. And the day the press was running, the day the printer was 
roll in the press to do the entire print run, 25,000 more books. They called and canceled their order. They were having a feud in their denomination. They put a spending freeze. They couldn't do it. For me, it was an exis existential threat. But the ET or the et or the divine timing of God showed up in that scenario. I didn't panic because I knew this. I knew that problems are your provision. You and I wouldn't have a business if it wasn't for problems. Problems are how you make a living solving those things. And so when I had that problem, which was pretty big to me at the time, I said, Lord, I know that with every problem, there's got to be a greater opportunity. What's the opportunity? And I prayed. And he gave me the idea, which I had not had up until that point, is instead of doing 25,000 leather books, we'll do 5,000 leather and 20,000 paperback, because that's a lot cheaper. And as it turned out, the paperback became a runaway bestseller. We sold hundreds of thousands of copies of just that book alone. It was a divine intervention that I didn't recognize. It showed up in the form of a problem. Just like with <clears throat> when Joshua and Caleb, they, they went out and spied the, the land. You might remember that story in the book of Numbers. And 12 spies went out and they came back and 10 of them gave a bad report. But two of them said, hey, don't be afraid. Those giants that these guys are talking about, these wimps here, those giants are bread for us. They are our source of, they are our provision. Are you kidding me? Wish there was more giants. They built big houses. This is going to be great. They said they are our provision. And they understood that. And this book talks about how do you enter into that realm? How do you enter into that? How do you enter into the five uh, force multipliers that Solomon talked about? And it, it, there's a whole lot more involved in that, but that's, that's a fair bit of it. Then number four, number four, and these, by the way, Everything I'm talking about is inside the Jesus School of Business. And I teach about that. I'll get to that in a second. Number four is all about nature, the perfect business model. Because you got to understand how this works. I'm sitting in my living room 17 years ago, praying like I do in the morning. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. This is what it means to walk with God, by the way. He spoke to me and said, son, I want you to go to Panama. I said, you mean up uh, on the panhandle of Florida? No, 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 Panama, Central America. I said, why? I didn't know anybody there. I'd never heard from anybody there. Nobody ever suggested that. I'd never seen a movie about Panama. Panama was not on my radar at all, had never been. And he said something about finances, business things I want to show you. I said, well, when do you want me to go? He said, make haste. So I said, okay. I got on the phone and made some reservations to leave in two weeks. I had to tidy up some business before I left. I met with a client. And I said, hey, I'll be out of the country for a while. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Panama. He said, oh, really? What for? I said, I don't know. How long are you going to be gone? I don't know. Where are you going to stay? I haven't figured that out yet. Why are you going? I said, because God told me to go there. I don't know. He said, well, it seems how you don't have an agenda. When you're down there, would you mind looking for some real estate for me? And if you do that, I'll underwrite your entire trip. So I did. He put an offer of $30 million on about a two-mile stretch of beachfront property there and gave me something to do. But while I was there, God spoke to me because he does that. I realize some people say that doesn't happen, but it does. It does. And I'm walking in the bed and breakfast. I'm walking to the place where you get breakfast. And the Holy Spirit said, son, everything you need to learn about business, you can learn in the rainforest. I said, say what now? You can learn in the rainforest? How is that possible? But the only reason why that seemed plausible was because of this. I got to tell you this. Let me see how we doing on time here. Okay, I got. I can tell you this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna let me tell you. As anybody, let me let me comment here if you would. I want to know, honestly, you have heard the verse in in Philippians four nineteen. My God will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You all familiar with that, right? You know the scripture. Has anybody ever been in a situation where they felt like my needs right now? I'm in need. I, it's not doesn't seem to be being met. 
And I, but I know the Bible says that, but yet I'm in this place. And it, has anybody had to struggle with that? Anybody? Hey, Richard Macca, God bless you, brother. I, you and I go back to the 70s. Good to see you on the call, man. Yes, 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 right now. Come on. Thank you for some honesty here. I tell you what, thank you. Yeah, I, I needed to know about this, okay? I, back in, uh, golly, I got to get my dates right. Somewhere around um, 1990, 89, 90, I don't remember exactly. And uh, I said, Lord, I know your word says in Philippians 419 that my God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I believe you. I know you cannot lie. And I looked up to heaven and I said, Lord, but I'm not lying. And I got needs that aren't met. And I don't know how to mesh these two things. I don't know how to reconcile that because you don't lie. And as far as I know, I'm not lying. And I said, how am I going to get your riches and glory that are so grand? The streets are paved with gold. Can I get a little bit of it down here? I mean, I'll go up there and sweep the streets, get a little dust, maybe cash it in. How, do, how does it work to get from there to here so I can pay some bills? Anybody want to know the answer to that? Anybody interested in that? Levon, yes, I do. Of course, of course. Thanks, James. Thank you. Th yeah, okay. Hey, Kretchy. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me tell you. And listen, I appreciate the feedback. I kind of need to know that you're tracking with me on this thing. I went for a walk in the woods. I love nature. I don't know if you love nature, but I love being out in the woods. I love being out in the mountains. I love that. And I'm out for a walk. And there's a big old cedar tree in front of me. And the Lord asked me a question. He said, son, where did that big old cedar tree in front of you, where did it get its wood from? I looked at the tree. I looked up at God. I looked in the woods and I said, I don't know. I'm not a botanist. I have no idea. Did little pieces, little small pieces like sawdust, little tiny chips of wood at night when nobody's looking kind of sort of creep towards it and then at daylight nobody move and then at nighttime it gets it, it sort of fastens itself to it and gets bigger and bigger and bigger i mean i knew that wasn't the case but like i don't know i have no idea and he said well when you find out where the tree gets its wood from you'll understand how to get my riches and glory into spendable form what would you do if god said that to you i'll tell you what i did I walked out of the woods, got my keys, got my car, and I drove to the library. Why? Because you see this wood here? You see that? It's a wood, solid wood. But about, I don't know, 300 years ago, that wood was not only in a tree, but it was in a seedling. And before that, it was nowhere. The wood that built this bookcase behind me used to be nowhere. The steel, the metal, you know, the, the, the aluminum in my phone, all that was in the dirt. You could dig it up and fashion it into something. But the wood used to be nowhere. Where does it come from? So I did this little bit of a study and I found out that a guy, I can't pronounce his name right now, but it's a complicated uh, Belgian name, I think it is. Back in, I think it was the 1600s. And I'm going to round the numbers, but he got a, a five gallon container, if you will and put 20 pounds of dirt and he put in a seedling, about a five pound seedling, planted it in there, brought it inside the house, exposed it to the light and watered it. A year later or two years later, whatever it was, that little seedling had nothing else, right? It just had water that he would water with, sunlight. And as far as he knew, that was it. He weighed the thing after a period of time and it now weighed a hundred pounds. The question was, hey, then he weighed the dirt. The dirt still weighed 20 pounds minus about an ounce. So 19 pounds, 15 ounces, something like that. Hardly any loss of dirt. But the tree had gained 95 pounds of mass. Where did it come from? How did that happen? How do you get something tangible from the invisible? How do you do that? It's a spiritual question. It's a law of nature. That's what this book is all about, by the way. That's what got me on the quest. And so when I'm down in Panama and he said everything you need to learn about business, you can learn the rainforest. I thought, oh, I remember this talk. You, 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 you like this stuff. God, you made all this stuff and you want to teach me stuff. I want to learn it. Now, 
in all candor, it's not a five minute answer. I'll give you a one just to get you on the track and you can check it out yourself. Get the books is what I recommend you do, but nonetheless, you can do your own research if you want to. But um, there are seven elements that you have to have to produce a tree. That's what the library said, seven things. You gotta have a seed, okay. You gotta have soil, okay, that makes sense. You gotta have nutrients in the soil. So far, so good, I get that. You gotta have water for the soil, okay. You gotta have warmth, okay. You gotta have light. And you got to have one other thing, CO2, which, by the way, is a good thing. The more CO2 in the air, the faster trees grow, the more products, the more produce that is grown, faster everything goes. CO2 is a good thing. Trees love it. Anyway, I'll leave that alone for now. So those seven things. Then you go into the Bible and you say, well, what is water in the Bible? It talks about the washing of the water of the word. It talks about the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covering the earth as the water covers the sea. Water, in short, is about knowledge. What is light? What is the seed? What is the soil? Well, you can learn that from the parable of the sower, which, by the way, the parable of the sower, if you want to know how to do any prospecting in, uh, I think it's the second book, I deal with that because the parable of the sower talks about four different kinds of prospects. My point is this, guys and gals. If you want to know how to do anything in business, in life, in to advance whatever it is, advance your vision, why not look at the, the models that God has given us in nature, in his word, use the, the word of God to interpret what we see with our physical eyes, marry that together, and then go out and do it. Because you know something? Let me just tell you this one fact you may not know. And I'm going to wrap it up. I could talk until this time tomorrow night, and I would not be tired. But I'm going to tell you. If you plant 100 trees in a field and they have those seven elements, obviously start with the seed, they have soil, they have water, light, heat, and all that. They have the seven basic elements. And you come back in five years later, those 100 trees will be producing, have offspring, there'll be bushels of fruit. It'll be great. You have a 100% success rate unless somebody crashed into it with the tractor or something like that. They're wired to succeed. But you take 100 wannabe entrepreneurs who start a business and you come back in five years, only four of them will have done the three things. A, they're still in business. B, they have at least one employee, so they're now really a company. And number three, they're making a profit. Four out of 100 compared to 100 out of 100. Does anybody think that might be worth studying? So here's what I did. I wrote all this out, and, and you have to understand, I'm doing this knowing that this is crazy for me as a business model. You don't make money selling books. I sold hundreds of thousands of my books. I know you don't, but that's not how you make money, okay? So I'm doing this because I feel like this is what God should do because he wants to get this information out to as many people as absolutely possible who wants to do that. And then because my wife, Judy, speaks into my ear and gives me a lot of really good insight, I mean, so valuable, but one of them was, why don't we take this and then not just give you the books, make that available to you, but we put it in, we put the, I'm training. I'm, I'm Moses had a way of teaching. There was a way that he did it. Okay. There, there was the scripture that was read. Then there was the how to you apply it. And then there was the mandate to do a certain thing. Those three things that is the what, the how, and then the, the, the action that you must do. So I started creating this course on a one-year program, which I'm just starting and I'm inviting you guys to be part of it inside the Jesus School of Business. If you come in there, I'm walking through these four books in a one-year period. I just got started to get a little bit ahead of you guys. So there's 39 videos in there right now. There'll be three or 400 before it's finished. And to walk through it with you, walk through all four of these with you, plus I think it's 29 other courses that are in there from sales and business and negotiating and communication secrets of Jesus and all kinds of other stuff in there. You, you'll see all that. If you haven't already checked it out, you should. But <clears throat> all that's in there. And for the next year inside the school, if you buy the books, now you ready? 15 bucks a piece. You buy all four of them to get the discount, 40% discount. Or you can go to Amazon if you just want one and Amazon selling, selling them for 25 bucks. Buy them for me. W Wally, you can put a link in there if you would, please, so people know where they can do this. 
but you buy the books. And for one dollar more, you can join the Jesus School of Business. One dollar, and now you're inside that. And you have access to the courses that have been charged for uh, people have paid thousands of dollars for those courses that are in there. Now, it's one dollar a month for the first month and only the first month. And then after that, it's $59 a month. However, you can cancel anytime you want, stay as long as you want. It doesn't matter. I'm here to help you. What I tried to do, <clears throat> my wife said, Why don't you turn it into a course? I said, You know what? That's a great idea. Because I want people not just to read it, but I want to walk through him, through it with them and actually help you. Why? <clears throat> because, my friend, we are in the beginning of a movement. God is raising up economic warriors for his purposes. We need some people that are actually going to the marketplace and taking some turf, taking some territory, not just so you can buy yourself a boat or a plane or whatever you want to do, your toys, not just for that. You can have those things you want to. I don't care about that. What I do care about is my country and your country and the lost. The millions of people are going to hell and they don't even know it. So he said, I want you to help my people prosper. So I'm not asking you, hey, send me a check for $1,000 and you get $100,000 back. I'm not asking for donations at all. I'm, I'm not asking you for anything. I'm inviting you. You want to do this? You want to do this with me together? I want to help you take back the gates. I want to help you take back our country. I want to help you take back what has been stolen from you and from me. We've all been robbed, my friends. We've all been robbed. We don't usually figure that out until we're well on in years and they realize, oh, I believed a lie all these years. I believed a lie all these years. Uh, hey, Wally, Belinda's got a, uh, something about the link in the course session expired or something like that. So you can look into that, please. But so what I want to do is I think I think I didn't have my glasses on, so I can't read all the comments unless I put them on. But if you guys are interested. We're, the, the Jesus School, what we do is once a month we get together, live, all of us that can. I answer your questions. Once a month, I'll take all your questions. We'll do what I can. I'll help you. Every week, I'm adding courses inside. I'm adding lessons inside. Hey, Wally, would you mind, pop, if you can, pop up the, the uh, curriculum on the Jesus School of Business, please. Just pop that open. Every week inside that uh, curriculum that, that's there. And I think Wally's going to show it to you. You can go full screen if you want. There it is. Um, and that very first one, scroll down a little bit, Wally. Just let them see the courses that are there. These are all the courses that have been created uh, over the last number of years. And every one of them is free when you're inside, when you're a member. And your membership's a dollar for the first month. Why? Because I didn't want you to feel like you had to take any risk. It's not for you. Jump out. No problem. If it is for you, you have access to high powered, high quality courses that some of them, depending on which ones, some for you know hundred bucks, some for thousands, it depends what, what course we're talking about. But all of that is available and I'm gonna be adding more. So if you become part of the Jesus School of Business, we're gonna to get together once a month. Our first meeting, by the way, this is why we're doing this today because we're having a first meeting in, uh, I think it's September the 7th or the 8th. When you join, you will give you the exact date. I already had that there. Uh, but we're going to have our first meeting then, and I'll take any questions you have. You can jump on any course, go through anything you want. You can binge read it if you want. If you buy the books, your first month is a dollar. You can jump out anytime. So that's the school of business. Now, anybody have any uh, questions for me? I tried to keep this right under an hour. We did it within one minute. Uh, Judy Pink, the vision, it is for his kingdom. Yes, it is. Ken Neal, I'm reading book two right now. It's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Wally says the links are good. I don't even see the links, so I don't know where they are, Wally, but I'm sure somebody does. So you can put them there. But uh, yeah, I got a lot to reclaim. William Collins says I got, oh yeah, hey, William. Good to see you, man. You got a lot to reclaim. I'm telling you, friends, the hour we're living in, we need a few tools. And the problem is, here's the problem. The people that need help the most can afford it the least. And what God said to me is, I, I was all excited. I got all this stuff. Man, I, I can get some clients. We can charge high tickets and it's going to be great. He said, I don't want to keep it to just a few people who can afford to pay you 
thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. That's not my plan. I didn't give it to you for that reason. Make it available broadly. I said, Lord, I will, but don't even worry about the butt. Just do what I say. say yes, sir. So I'd love you to join this thing. By the way, word got out ahead of time. This is the first, this is the world premiere of it, really. Word got out, and we already had a couple dozen folks register in the school uh, and join. They're already starting on it. Our first live session is coming up the first week in September. So I want you to get in, you know, get the books, so get them shipped out to you, get in. Um, you have a choice if it's international, by the way, if it's international, uh, we can ship them internationally, but some people might prefer to save the shipping cost and just do the digital digital version. So that's there for you as well, whether you're stateside or, or international, doesn't matter. So we have two options that way. And you can choose to get it either monthly or some people are prepaying. I've got a number of people that say, I'll just prepay for the year. You still get your first month free and you get two more months free um, when you do the annual. So it's up to you how you want to do that. But anyway, 40 years. 40 years of stuff. And then the, the, the mastery program is to say, it's, it's one thing to read it. It's another thing to master it. And I'm going to walk with you and help you. There's a Q&A button. There's a question, ask Michael button inside the, in, uh, the Jesus School of Business. You can ask me anything. And I'll probably put it in a video back. We have the Facebook group. And Molly, maybe you can put a link to the Facebook group in there as well. Um, <clears throat> the Jesus School of Book uh, of Business Facebook group. That's free for that. There's no charge to be in the Facebook group. The training's not in the Facebook group. The training is on the, the website. But the Facebook group is for encouragement. We can talk to each other, get to know each other, and so forth. We can do all that. Let me see some of the comments here. Um, how, oh, how do I get it in Nigeria? Easy. Uh, just that's the first one I saw. You get it. You go ahead and order it. If you don't, if you want the physical books, there is the shipping is I think twenty dollars. Um, but if you can save that money, just go ahead and order on the link wherever it is. Wally can keep dropping those links in. If you can't see them because um, I don't see them, I know he's putting them in, but they're going by pretty fast. There they are. If you, uh, if you, the fellow in Nigeria, if you want to hop on, you can do that. You'll get the digital version of these books if you want to tonight. You'll be enrolled in the school. You'll have your password. You'll be able to start accessing all this training. I want to change the dang world. I want to change. I want, I'm serious about this. I didn't do this to make 15 bucks on a book. I tell you that. There, there's a reason for this. And if you want to be part of this, I would love it. Love it. We're going to start a movement. We're going to start learning because I told you those stories in the beginning about everything we did in business. Not to brag. It's nothing about that. It's to say it works. It works. It's amazing. And you know what's so cool about it? You know what business is supposed to be like? Tomorrow at daylight, go for a walk, preferably in the woods or in a park, and look at the trees. And if you can, if there are any, if it's in season, look at the fruit trees. And ask yourself, do you hear them groaning? Do you hear them complaining? Do you hear them crying or screaming or fighting? No, you don't. You don't hear that. They're at peace. When you learn how to do good business God's way, if you learn how to do that, it's peaceful and extremely exciting. So if you want to get in on this, we're launching our first meeting is in, in like I say, the first week in September. I'd love to have you join that. We'll get your, um, if you do that, your books, if you want the physical version, they will be uh, ordered. They'll be on their way uh, tomorrow. You'll have a delivery date sent to you. All that's coming. But let me see. Uh, it's gone too fast for me. So I don't know if there's any questions. Got to start a movement in the marketplace. Come on, William. Absolutely. We got to do that. Brad, thank you, brother. Cheryl, my finances have never been so bad as now. I'd love to join, but I, I was fired in December with no income. Trusting God to not lose our house. Hey, I. You want to talk about not losing your house. I Let me tell you something. God. Huh. I got back from Guatemala on a trip. I thought I was going to do great things there. And in many respects, it was the best trip of my life. But it was also the worst trip because. 
everything that seemed that could go wrong did go wrong. I ordered 500 workbooks to do a seminar down in Guatemala, but the printer printed up 5,000. Wouldn't give me one unless I paid for them all. I said on the poster, lunch was not included at that beautiful hotel we're at, but somebody translated it to say lunch included. 250 people showed up and I had to either explain to them why it said lunch included was a typo or a translation error. I'm sorry, you're on your own for lunch. Or I had to buy 250 people lunch to keep my word, which I did. Very expensive. Go out to dinner with five or 10 of your friends and buy them dinner and then multiply that by 50 or so. It, it's a big deal. So we had to do all that kind of stuff. And when I got back, my credit cards were maxed. My credit line was maxed. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And so the, to the person whose name's already gone by me, I'm going to let you in on a secret right now. This is important. It's in book number one. I'm telling you, now listen carefully. It's for all of you. Here's the secret. When I got back from Guatemala, I was so stressed. I thought, I, I, I'll, I'll deliver pizzas at night and I'll deliver newspapers in the morning and I'll work in my business during the day. I mean, I didn't know what I was going to do. And the Lord spoke to me while I'm in the bathroom shaving. And he says, I mean, I wasn't even asking him a question. I was too stressed out. And he said to me, pursue me. I, I, I said, God, you know, I just got back from Guatemala. I taught biblical business and all that and, 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 and didn't go so well. I, I thought I was pursuing you. What, what, what do you mean pursue you? Can you explain it to me? He said, pursue me. Tears started welling up in my eyes. I thought, what are we talking about? I said, God, give me a list of five things, 10 things, 20 things. I'll do everything on that list. I don't know what you mean. If you were a man in my backyard, I'd run out there and I would pursue you. I would chase you like Jacob. I would try to wrestle with you. You could break both my legs. I don't care, but I don't see you. And I'm two months behind on my mortgage, on my, my car loan, and I have no money, none. Well, excuse me. I had, I had uh, $300 cash. And that was going to last me. I wasn't going to pay any bills with it. I was going to see how, my, how long I could live on $300 before they shut my power off. So I, I didn't know what to do. So I said, I'm going to, one thing I know to do is I'm going to go in my living room and I'm going to read the word of God and pray until two things happen, until you show up, until it becomes so alive that I don't want to quit. And I stay in it until you leave. That changed from a five minute sneak peek at my Bible to three hours on average, sometimes five hours, occasionally a little, little less, every day pursuing him. And you know what happened? Somebody called and said, the Lord told me to, to give you $1,000. Oh, by the way, I forgot. I took the $300 I had because the, the tension of wondering what's going to happen. How, how am I going to make this last? How many weeks can I live on $300? So we wired the entire sum to a widow whose husband had been kidnapped and killed and she had little children. And we thought she needs the money a lot more than we do in Guatemala. We wired her the whole amount. I said, God, it's all gone. You have a soft spot for widows and orphans. I don't have any money. Let's see what you're going to do. And somebody said, how about $1,000 for this? Somebody else said, can I? Uh, one guy called me up, a very good friend of mine, but we hadn't talked in probably a year. He said, Michael, the Holy Spirit told me to call you. What's going on? I told him a little bit. He said, what? Well, I need some help here. How much would you charge to do some consulting? Come up to where he was and do some consulting for a week. And I jokingly tell I was making a sign that said, we'll consult for food. <laughs> I said, if the Holy Spirit told you to call me, he can tell you what to pay. I didn't have anything. He said, would $5,000 be enough after paying your expenses? I said, sure. Then my publisher called me. They wanted me to do a book, gave me a nice big advance. And then another one, and then another one. And then a TV network, one of the biggest in Christian TV networks in the world, said, we'd like to do an infomercial with you. And we'll give you a big five-figure advance. I'm just pursuing God, and it starts coming. And the thing is, when we're stressed, sometimes we get into this worry thing. Listen, friends. You, you better learn how to pursue God now. It's not a threat. I'm just saying we need it. We need to be able to find him. And my friend Rick Osborne, who I love dearly like a brother, 
he started off, you know, about 11 years ago, God told him to set aside three hours a day. So he did. And then after that, the Lord said, I want you for six hours a day. And he did that for eight years. And then the Lord said, I want you for 12 hours a day. And he did that for another year. That'll change you. I'll be talking to you guys about that probably next week or so. But nonetheless, I was pursuing God like this. And what I was amazed at, you know what it says? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You, you know where it says that? Right? Matthew 6, 33. I used to do it like this. Read my Bible. Oh, there's a good idea. I'll go do it. No, no, no. Seek him and let him add to you. If I can get you, the person that said we're in that bad situation, if I can get you to throw yourself at his feet, essentially, not begging, not like that at all. I just mean in worship to him. Come into his presence and say, God, it's up to you. I love you. And you do that, you're going to see your world change. That I can tell you. And I, I got, let me tell you something. I got a million stories, guys, but I want to help people on this call. I know what it's like to be in some pretty tight situations. I was doing a, a, a seminar, a physical seminar in Oklahoma City. Whatever year it was. I don't remember the year. I'd be guessing. I think it was 2005. I'm not sure. No, it was 2000. Now I remember. It was 2002. And so I was doing the seminar there. And, you know, we need a certain number of people to register to hopefully have a positive outcome. And it was a couple of days before the event and registrations were really low and our ad budget had been spent. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I think the seminar was on, I don't remember, let's say Wednesday and it was now Sunday. And I said, okay, Monday morning, we're going to, we're going to call everybody that ever registered and ask them to get their friends and all those kind of strategies. And then I said, you know what? Forget it. Here's what I did. And I'm telling you, some of you are right now, I know are scared. I know that. I've been there. I came home on Monday and I spent Monday till two o'clock in the afternoon from get up in the morning till two in the afternoon on my face, laying on the floor, playing Christian music, worship music, singing to him and reading my Bible. I, I thought I was going to work my butt off and, and phone everybody I could to make it happen. And instead, I pursued God. I pursued him with everything in me. And it wasn't like this desperate thing. It was just pursued him like nothing else mattered. I love you, Father. I love you. I thank you for your salvation. I thank you for And I just, I just did that until two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm supposed to be working. But I pursued him instead. And then when that lifted around two o'clock in the afternoon, I, I opened up my email to see if there was any new registrations. And my inbox was full. I just saw in, you know, registration, 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 registration. I thought some poor soul hit the submit button 20 times. And I began to look at the names. There were no two the same. I had 120, I think it was, registrations come in just in that little window of time to physically show up for a, 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 an all-day seminar. What had happened was the mayor of Oklahoma City heard I was coming. I didn't know the mayor. I never heard of him. I didn't know he, you know, I didn't know anything about it. And he was so impressed with the Selling Among Wolves seminar that we were doing in that city that he did a fax blast to everybody on his list, which is like 2,000 people. And he did that. He was a Christian. His name was Humphreys. Don't know his first name. I knew his brother, Kent Humphreys. I, I met him years later. But God did that. So if you are in a jam right now, here's the thing. Get with him and, 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 and spend some time with him tomorrow, tonight even, but tomorrow at the least. And open into time. Pursue him. I could give you a hundred stories. But listen, I'm gonna, if you want to be in with me, Great. And I want to say something else because I heard from a lady today. She posted on the webinar and I, I don't know if you're on the call still, but um, she said, I'm 84 years old. I'm twice widowed and I'm not in business, but I'm a prayer warrior. And I want to tell you something. We need that because my intention here is to raise up an army of economic warriors who are going to go into the marketplace, come take resources 
build themselves up strongly and help take back our country. Can you say that? Help make our country great again, make your country great again. Let's 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 take back our counties, our school boards and all that kind of stuff. Do those kinds of things. And so to that lady, if you're watching and to anybody like it, I would say this. If you're not in business, you know, if you're in ministry, you can definitely use this. But let's say you're not. You still want to do it. You might want to just do it for somebody else because this is a movement. We're raising up people that are going to learn God's ways. And by the way, when I say God's ways, hopefully you know this. There are lots of stuff out there where people, Christians even, good, good, good people, okay? They just maybe don't know so, so much. And they go to the world and they learn from a guy in Scientology or they learn from some other guy, whatever. They learn from these people. And they go, oh, this is good. He's making so much money. He's got his own whatever it is, right? He's big, big thing. And, they, and they, they take all that stuff in, not realizing that they're drinking contaminated water, okay? And then some of them take it, take those ideas, and they wash it. They, I call it, they take them from Egypt, let's say. And then they wash it in the River Nile, Nile, and then they get a Bible verse, and they tape it over top of it and duct tape it, and they say, now it's Christian. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. You want something biblical. It comes from the word. It comes from the way God does stuff. I spent 40 years putting this together. I'd love to walk with you on the journey. And I would love to ask you, if you think it's not for you, if you're not in, into the, the space at all, you just wanted to learn, I'm so happy you're here. You're going to love the books anyways. But invite your friends. Let's start a movement in your country. Uh, Bryson, I don't know if you're on. In, I think Bryson's in, New, in Nigeria. I believe he is. He said he's got a whole bunch of young people he wants to train in this thing. If you want to train, I want to help you. Let's start a movement. Any Buddy, uh, Wally, I, 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 and Judy, thank you, sweetheart, uh, for putting that in there for the Facebook thing. I don't know. Oh, thank you, LaVon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Listen, I'm in no hurry to go, but I, I didn't plan on going longer than this. I got so much in here. I, I don't know what to do with it. I got to get it out. And if I only do it for, for you know, few hundred people, then I feel like I've, I've, I've blown that. But I think God has other plans for this. So I stopped everything else and said, we're doing it this way. This is his leading. And I'm going to do it with you. So I hope you'll be in it. If you're already in my coaching group, which is we meet weekly, that's a more expensive thing. We meet every week. We, I review business plans and, and marketing stuff. And we have one-on-one -on -one time. We do all that kind of stuff in the weekly thing. Uh, if you're already in the if you're in the weekly group, this is free. This is included for you. You you get this. You don't have to pay anything except for if you want to buy the books, but you don't have to pay to be part of the school because you're in the weekly coaching. But most people here are not part of that group. I think I didn't intentionally invite people that were already in the weekly group. So let me see. I'm gonna receive Jordan. Hey, Jordan Grimes. Man, I saw your post earlier. Let's do it, brother. Come on, Jordan. I, I, I'm so glad. I, I wish I could see all the comments, but I take my glasses off every once in a while. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Um, link finally worked. It's probably overwhelmed with everybody trying to get on it. Yeah. Yeah, Belinda. Probably was. Um, what I want you to do is you get inside the school. I want you to get inside the Facebook group. Judy, if you scroll through this, she put a link to the Facebook group. That's free. Facebook is free. There's no training in there. I do put up videos and I, I do do some things that are not in the training and I put encouraging words and we network with each other and all that. I opened that up just, a, I don't know, two weeks ago, I think it is. We got about 500 members, 550, whatever it is. I don't remember uh, so far. We can spread the word on that because that's just a place where we can have some community. But let's, let's take back the gates. Let's take back our town, our city, our school district, our country. Let's shake the world. And I'm going to tell you something. You watch. Who makes the rules in the country? Typically, the guys with the money, they kind of call the shots. We need to have some influence. We don't have to own CNN. It'd be nice if you did, but you don't have to. We have to shine where God puts us. But I'm going to tell you, when you get these books, yeah, when you get them, it is going to open up your mind amazingly. Because everything I've taught, I had to do first. Which, by the way, friends, that's why it took 40 years. If I was just opening up the Bible and say, oh, here's something. That looks good. Let me do this. 
when I found something, like, for example, <laughs> let me tell you something. See this book here? Okay. One of the chapters is called the Brazil nut effect. What is that? Did you know that in the rainforest, which I went to five times just in Panama alone, plus in Belize, Costa Rica, the upper Amazon in Ecuador, God had me go all over the place to study his creation. I got access to hundreds of scientific papers written by the Smithsonian at their headquarters for tropical research, worldwide headquarters in the Panama Canal. I mean, I dug deep at my own expense, dug deep. And one of the things I found out was about the Brazil nut tree. It gets 200 feet tall. But I always thought, you know, you think you might know what a Brazil nut looks like. You know, right? You've seen them. They look like a little section of an orange. That's because they actually come in a ball the size of a cannonball. I didn't know that in a very thick shell. And when they fall from the tree, if it hits you on the head, it could kill you, kind of like a coconut. And the only animal in the rainforest with teeth sharp enough and jaws strong enough is a little creature called an agouti, A-G-O-U-T-I. Some of you know what that is because you might live around there. And that agouti is kind of like a squirrel, only much bigger. And, and they they open it up and they love Brazil nuts. It's got selenium. They're so healthy. They're so good for you. And it, and it, it buries them down the way because you see what happens is that the agouti has mobility, but it doesn't have any food. The Brazil nut tree has food, but it doesn't have any mobility. So it does this symbiotic relationship and they trade what they have in excess for what they're lacking. When I saw that relationship, I said, wait a minute, how does that work in business? And it wasn't long before the, uh, the guy that was a part owner, 25% uh, owner, I think it was, of Success Magazine said to me, hey, Michael, would you come and train our salespeople in New York? And how much would you charge for that? I said, What's money between friends? I said, you don't have to pay me. All I want is a piece of paper. He said, what do you mean you want a piece of paper? I said, I don't even want a whole piece of paper. I just want one side of a piece of paper. And then he caught on. I wanted a full page ad and I wanted it to run for a year, which at the time was bi-monthly. So it'd be six issues for the year. And at the time, a full page ad cost $63,000. So a year was 360 some odd thousand dollars. And I traded them what I knew, which cost me nothing because I have it in excess. When I give my knowledge, like everything I've told you tonight, you now have, but I didn't lose anything. So I traded that for a full page ad, ran as a result, I ended up getting picked up by a publisher who said, hey, we'd like to do a book. This book back here, Rainforest Strategy, the planet's most successful business model. They wanted to do the book. Everything that's inside here is not theory and it's not imagination. And it's incredibly, incredibly powerful and infallible. Infallible by that I mean that which is on God's word. His word is, is infallible and the way he does things is worthy to be emulated. So, whether you're in business, you have a job, you want to start a business, you're in ministry, you're a teacher, you just love learning. I urge you to get the books. I urge you to get the school, to enroll in the school, be part of the movement and help us spread this around the world. Today is day one. Our first meeting is September, I believe it's the 7th, it's a Thursday. So you can take that. It's the, it's the Thursday. The first Thursday after Labor Day is we're having our first meeting. That's where you can come together. And instead of being on a webinar, it'll be on a Zoom call and I can hear you and I can see you and we can talk. Okay? So get the books, enroll in the school if you want to. If you don't, that's fine. It, as you can tell, it's not going to change my life. I'm here to change your life and the lead a movement. So put my glasses back on to see. Um, Wally's put some more things up there. Um, Judy says, Shannon, I'll make sure Michael answers that for you. Please join the free Facebook group. Judy, sweetheart, that's my wife, by the way. I don't know what the question was that Shannon has. Can, can somehow you make me know that? Um, she wanted to know um, 
let's see where I was at. She wanted to know the time, which you told her. What will what time will the classes be and what days? Okay, they're going to be once a month. Okay. The, unless you join the weekly coaching group, but that's a lot more intense. We we work with each other. I review your proposals. It's a lot more involved. But the 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 Jesus School of Business is the the, the broader audience, if you will. And we are our first one is Thursday. And um let me let me give you the the timing of the very first one. So I have it on my calendar right here. It is at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, September the 8th. Now, we may change it after the first time. I'm going to try to find a time that works for people. I put it, we put it there on that day. Um, it'll be noon Pacific. It'll be two o'clock in the afternoon someplace else. We try, I tried to find a time that would work. Uh, so we'll see. We're going to do, but it will be recorded. And so that anybody that's inside the group can have access to it later. And you can always go to Ask Michael, which is inside the, the, the school itself. And you can always go inside there and, um, uh, you know, put your questions. Wally, would you please pop open the, 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 the Jesus School of Business curriculum? Go to the first one. I just want to show people one thing so they can get an idea of what's inside there, if you would. And, uh, but all, the, all these courses are <laughs> the result of decades of, let me try this. I, I I got a ton of stories, guys, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm uh, click on God's best kept secrets. That's the mastery program, please. That's fourteen hundred ninety five dollar value. It's included free uh, if you're inside the group. Uh, scroll a little bit further, please. Okay, so chapter one, it's got four lessons. Chapter two has got four lessons, and basically, you can click on any one of those. It doesn't matter. Um, pick one you, that's interesting to you. You click on it. Okay, week two, chapter four of the Bible, God's instruction book for life and business. And there, scroll that up. And we have one, two, three, four videos there. God's word applies to business. More examples of that. First two levels of Hebrew interpretation of scripture. The last two levels. All this, th this is all this kind of stuff. Then there's the video, how God's word applies to business. So there's all these videos that we do. There's currently 39 in there. But every week I'm adding to it because I'm walking through this with you and we'll be live once a month you can post questions you can do all kinds of stuff in facebook tag me in facebook ask questions or anything you want inside the facebook group but the training is for people that are that go to the website and and, and choose to be part of the jesus school of business so if you want to start a revolution with me if you want to see if you if you want to see people start winning and you want to be one of them and you say I got to learn how to turn my eyes to Jesus, not to man, but to God. Because he's either what he is or he isn't. He's either going to do what he says or he's not. Let me tell you something. I'm going to try to shut up, but I got to tell you this. Because there's people on this call that need this. But in 1985, after losing everything, I had a beautiful home. Today's a seven-figure home. I had a nice Lincoln. I had all kinds of stuff. But at this particular time in my life, I was sleeping on a, a friend's sofa and using a borrowed car. Some of you read me, heard me, uh, read my post about the, the Dodge Duster. That was in those days. And I was but not in a good frame of mind. I said, God, what am I going to do? Someday I'll tell you the full story. Because it's probably a 15-minute one. And it is amazing. And I don't want to butcher it. I'll just tell you the end of the matter. I asked him a question. And I said, what about me? Will I ever be established again? And he said, Second Chronicles 7.17. I didn't know what it said. I ran up to my car. I was in a ravine. And it says to Solomon. And as for the, you know, I paraphrase. If you'll hearken unto, unto the word of the Lord and do what it says. I will establish you. Verse 18 continues. And so I thought, wow, you did speak to me. And I picked up my Bible. And I said, God, I will hearken unto your word and I will do what it says. And I will tell everybody, everybody I can possibly that you work and, and everything you say is true. But if you don't do what it says you do, I can't tell anybody. So you've got to do what it says. Or I can't talk to anybody about this. 
but I'll throw myself into it. And after he quit laughing, the miracle that happened in the next hour will blow you away. I'll probably make that into a blog. You guys get my blogs. I hope you get my blogs. Send them out. Anyways, did I did I miss the question? Did I answer the question, Wally? Uh, that yeah, Judy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, um, Judy's been handling the tech side of things very well on the chat. <laughs> oh, Judy, bless you, sweetheart. I love you. Thank you. Levon said Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles seven seventeen. I think it was seven seventeen, not seven fourteen. Seven seventeen. And then verse 18, it continues. It's the combination of the two. You got to learn how God speaks to you. You would not believe what happened that day. You would not believe it. It will blow you away. I ought to do another call just to tell you this, but I'm trying to be respectful because some of you guys are on there saying, well, we don't want to be rude. We don't want to leave. And I love y'all. God loves you much more than I do. And I'm trying. It's easy for me. I kind of feel that way. It's kind of natural because he put his spirit in me. But I hope this is something you guys can get. And I look forward to working with you. I look forward to being on this journey together. And it's together, together, spread the word and help people learn how to do business God's way. Not something secular. We put a Bible verse on it. Call it Christian. I call that biblically compatible. Assuming that it is, it may not be. But I'm looking, what I do, everything is biblically derived. Big difference. So that's it, friends. I uh, Let me see. Is there anything I'm not answering, sweetheart? No, I'm not talking to you, Wally. I'm talking oh, to Jude. <laughs> uh, how long does the training last? Okay, I see that question. Here's the thing. If you get inside the Jesus School of Business, you can you can access any of the 29 or 30 courses that are there. And there's over 200 videos in there right now. You can watch them at your own leisure anytime you want. Every week, I'm adding to the God's Best Kept Secret Mastery Program. So far, there's 39 videos. There'll probably be three or 400 by the time I'm finished. But every week, I'm adding to that. The live meeting is once a week. I'm there for an hour. That's the plan. But I will stay longer as needed. In other words, I'm not going to cut it off. Because I got something else to do. I'm there to answer questions. We're in a group. We're going to get to know each other. We're going to get to help each other. We're going to make a difference. We're going to take back the gates of commerce. We're going to take back our cities, our country, our nation. We're going to use these things. You're going to use these skills. Listen to me carefully. Anybody here like to witness? Anybody like to tell people about Jesus? Does anybody like to do that? Anybody? Anybody? Share the Lord. Anybody do that? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, yeah, good, good. Hey, Jake. Oh, man, Jake, good to see you, brother. Yes, praise God. Let me tell you something. This will help you do that. I, I was in Jamaica. I was speaking at, at, at uh, something that I had wanted for many years to be a, a, a platform speaker, a plenary speaker at something called the Fellowship of Companies for Christ International. <clears throat> It was their annual conference at the Ritz-Carlton in Jamaica. I'm in Jamaica. And the hurricanes had just come through, and so tourists didn't come. And so we had the place to ourselves. And there was a little sort of a strip mall right beside the hotel. Went over there. Uh, and just my, my Mont Blanc pen had fallen. It was the, the kind that was made of ceramic, and it had broken. And so I wanted to replace it. It was the kind of store that I thought I would have it. And I went there. And I'm in this store. And there's two guys working it from, I look like they were from, but they were from India. And they had a picture of one of these Hindu gods that has like six, six arms and an elephant nose and whatever, all that kind of weird stuff. And they had another picture of a guy, uh, some, some guru kind of guy. And so they had this on the wall. And I said to myself, very uncharitably, I'm not dropping a dollar in this place. I'm out of here. But on second thought, I said, you know what? There's nobody else in here. And it just irritated me. So I went up to them. And instead of saying, 
the four spiritual laws, I did what I do in sales. I asked them questions. I said, who's that a picture of there? And he said, oh, that's God. I said, really? He doesn't look very old. Look like he's about 40. And I began asking him a series of questions, culminating with, if you were wrong, would you want to know? He said, well, yes. I said, what's your name? It was some Indian name. I said, what does that name mean? He said, it means love. His sales associate came over and I said, what's your name? He told me. He said, what's that name? And I think it meant grace or something like that. He said, do you guys understand something? I laid out the gospel for him. I said, before you even knew him, he put, he branded you with his characteristics, love and grace. So that one day you would come to know him. Would you like to know him? Would you like to have him come up and take residence inside you? They said, yes, we would. And those two guys were born again. And then the next day, my driver took me up to Dunn's River Falls. I asked him questions. I didn't layer a bunch of information on him. I do what I, what I teach. And he was a Rastafarian. I said, you know, Haile Selassie's grandson was friends with a friend of mine. He can assure you that he was not God. But I do know who is. Would you like to meet him? Long story short, he got saved. So these things will help you in life, in negotiations, in family relationships, in everything. It's broad. So anyways, I'm going to, I'm, 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 Wally, tell me, Judy, sweetheart, you're, I know you're looking at it as well. Am I missing anything? Because I, 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 most of the time I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see. Thank you all. Yeah, everybody. No, most of the time, most of the comments are that people are having trouble completing their purchase it's getting a timeout so we're going to serve our overload or something going on so they can't help them Im immediately but we'll get it okay what we'll do um is thank you for that uh we will send out uh, a follow-up email to everybody with the links i'd like to see everybody that was on the call and everybody that's hearing this later in the replay if it resonates with you jump in and as i said before clear as i could say it you can get out anytime there's no pressure nothing just come on in come on in thank you thank you Mar marlene thank you marlene bond thank you um judy says judy jones says maybe it'll work in the morning keeps telling me my session has expired as soon as i select an option well that's probably a good sign i'm hoping it's a good sign i have seen some things come through but maybe it's just a little overwhelmed um but we'll make sure everybody gets it so guys shannon thank you everybody thank you father in the name of jesus i just pronounce a blessing over everybody in this call and everybody that says i want to be in on this thing i wanted to take back my community take back the life that was promised to me operate in your ways would you bless them Everyone that feels lack right now, bless them, meet them, meet them, meet them. Open up doors of opportunity they cannot shut. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Forgive me for saying this, but I love you all. And I don't hardly know you, but it just it's there in my heart. David Stewart, bless you, my friend. Oh, good to see you. All right. Um, we will get an email out. Wally can send an email out to everybody that that um, attended, uh, everybody, whatever, that registered, and, and uh, put the links in there. Wally, explain what happened, and, and we'll know from there. All right? All right, friends. Thank you very much. Sayonara. God bless everybody. Thank you for coming. It's been terrific. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, uh, who else is there? Uh, Diane, Jake, bless you, brother. Bless you, Richard, bro. Thank you. Thank you, LaVon. God bless you. Jake, man, I'm proud of you, man. Completing your, your residency like that. Plastic surgeon, Tampa General. Let's go, Jake. <laughs> Come on. Proud of you, man. That's good. Griselda, thank you. God bless you. 
Priyana, man, it's so late for you in London. Priyana, how did you stay up this late? How did you do it? <laughs> Glad to have you on the call, man. Tom, Garrett, God bless you. Johanna in Accra. Joe, Accra, when you coming to Boston? Shannon, God bless you. Ibrahim, bless you. Tim Porter, bless you, brother. God's business revolution. Tim Porter knows all about that, let me tell you. All right. All right. Oh, man, I don't want to say goodbye. I got so much more to say, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop here. Just saying goodbye to everybody. Ruth Oliver, goodbye. Monifa, goodbye. Evelyn. Hey, Evelyn. Good to see you. I didn't know you were on the call. Judy and I miss hearing from you, man. It's good to see you uh, tonight in Alberta, Canada. Uh, George, God bless you. Thank you, George Tang. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Still 92 people hanging on. We're going to say goodbye. We're going to shut it down. And then I'm sorry there was a problem, but it's it's a good problem. If if the system's overwhelmed, that means too many people are trying at the same time. I don't know if that's a problem we can fix. Uh, we can just make it so that everybody goes at a different time and we'll get those links out to you tonight. And you just keep trying to get in. Do you have any problems? Email Wally at michaelpink.com. Wally at michaelpink.com because he's the problem solver. I'm the guy that talks. He's the guy that fixes my mess. <laughs> All right. Good night. Judy Piranis says good night to you. Marlene, good night. Judy and Wally, bless you, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I'm going to go. We're down to 80 people. Listen, guys, I'm I don't the know button. what to do, but we're going to say goodbye. What, Wally? I said I'm pressing the button. <laughs> okay. Goodbye.